My name is Jan Welch, and welcome to the Then and Now Blading YouTube channel. I'm excited to announce a brand new show called On the Streets. And On the Streets is a show where I and other correspondents will be walking around different events and competitions and talking to the skaters there about what's happening, about the scene, and about things related to the sport. For this episode, Chris G is our correspondent, and he went to the Blading Cup in Santa Ana, California. And he walked around and he had some really interesting questions and conversations with lots of skaters and roller skaters on the streets. So I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I do. If you do like it, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and hit the bell icon to be notified of all new uploads. Make sure to follow me on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, description below. And if you want to support this channel, Make sure and visit our Patreon page that's also in the description below, as well as our donation page. Let's get started with the first episode of On the Streets with Chris G. Hey guys, this is Chris here with uh, Then and Now Blading here on behalf of Jan Welch. Uh, I'm his Mexican cousin, Juan Welch. So I'm going to be here interviewing people, kind of seeing what's going on, checking out the shop and, you know, asking people some random questions. So. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Ten years of Blade Cup, man. Yeah. Uh, how does it feel here to be here on the ten year anniversary? Uh, it's awesome. Uh, this is only my second time at a Blade Cup. Uh, the last time I was here, I think I was still skating for Shadow. So, very long time ago. So, I'm just happy to be here. Like I've been with John and them since the very beginning of the company. So, just to see this shop come alive and to be here for this amazing event. I mean, it's it's everything. So, I'm here in full support of them skates and of John. Uh, John Bellino just did some nutty, nutty, nutty shit. I wanted to ask you, you know, it's the 10 year anniversary of the Blading Cup. How important of a role do you think these type of competitions uh, play? Well, I think Blading Cup especially, along with things like Winter Clash, but Blading Cup specifically, considering the birth of rollerblading, Southern California, and the idea of being able to be in the streets, get the kind of walk through traffic that exists here, but then also have something that exists where all the older bladers can come back who grown up skating still live in california and then you come out to events like this you see robert Leovanos, arlo eisenberg dominic sagona eric shrine like everybody that you grew up idolizing is now attending this event so that it adds an extra layer of cachet to it and it's important for people to understand where rollerblading came from so we can know where we go and what the future holds so being able to have kids get excited about the history and then see some of their idols, not only skating, but interacting and still being in the space is kind of cool. What'd you think of uh, yesterday's Veteran Cup competition? Yeah, it was pretty dope, man. Uh, Arlo was killing it. Dude, that dude does not age. Yeah, I think he's a vampire. personally really enjoyed seeing some really old footage of you on the then and now uh, YouTube page yeah, yeah. seeing you back in the day that was like um, one of the most influential trips for my hometown Fresno just all in general I mean watching Happy and Shima and those guys it's hard to explain because those guys showed up and they destroyed our town but they like there were so many of us that wanted to be in the mix with them and skate with them and kind of fuck up what they were doing really and it was cool that they didn't care you know what I mean like they just let us skate with them and uh, me watching Haffy especially changed a lot of perspective of me actually like just seeing the way he handled business blading you know like how mental his game was locked in he had all these people gromming out on him and he was just it was just rad it changed my whole life dude just want to make a note that nobody has uh, commented or appreciated my fucking dope ass vintage shirt. Co ed naked in line skating with the fucking back hit. Do you think you've seen some good outfits here? Yeah, I mean, I think the main thing is that people always express themselves in their own way. And I think, like, the way I look at even the way I dress myself, you know, or how I skate, it's the same thing is that it's all subjective, you know. So I feel as long as, like, when people are showing themselves, 
and it speaks to that like you know whether it's through their skating through their clothes or whatever there's a level of authenticity and if, we, if you can get to that point I really feel like you're speaking your own language and there's a lot of people who just like dress in their own style it might be very simple but it's beautiful you know the blading cup has impacted rollerblading definitely in a very positive way it's the only like really like core competition that we have where and it draws a, quite a bit of a crowd the foot traffic in Santa Ana around this time has traditionally been always there but John Julio being down here for so long He's a legend, so we all come out to support John Julio on anything he does, so it's awesome to be down here. How do you think roller skating's impacted rollerblading? Oh, um, well, yeah, I, th I would say that roller skating has had a big imp impact on me and also roller skating. I started off on roller skates, and like in Charlotte, like roller skating traditionally, like in the minority culture, like in the com minority community, is big. And like on Friday and Saturday, we would always go to the uh, trade winds and do speed skating and dance. And, you know, now with roller skating coming back, and I mean, even like Michelle Moxie's out here who's a legend, and she was like, you know, her brother bladed, like the stories, I don't know the exact story, but it's crazy. But like, I think we've always taken a lot of influence from each other to begin with. Brian Wainwright, if you remember, back in the day. He, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and, and, and Brian he, Wainwright, yeah. I would looked up to him too, so it was like, yeah. You know, what's your perspective on rollerblading and like the blading cup? Honestly, this is so dope. Like, I'm so stoked to be here because I think that our communities, like our types of skating, we have so much to learn from each other. And like any time that I watch blading, I'm so inspired. And I want to try a bunch of new things and even low-key want to try like blading. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's so cool to like unite our communities because I do think that like the move forward is together. Like I, I think it's so important. How has this 10 year anniversary compared to uh, the blading cups you've been to so far? This year, um, one thing that I noticed right away was the the tents or the booths uh, for the companies, and almost every company has a new product. So it had shown the increase of um, just like the inline skate market and how many more people there's involved in it. That's one thing, and another thing that I noticed is how the quad skating community is out here as well, which is awesome to see. They're supporting inline skating. So those are two main things that I've noticed about this year versus the other years that I've been to this event. It's funny that you bring that up because that's actually one of the questions I've been asking a lot of people. It's like, how do you think the quad skating has impacted rollerblading? Because I feel like it's, uh, it's, it's introduced a lot of people to uh, a sport that they didn't even know still existed. Yeah, so what I think quad skating has done is has kind of opened up the doors to start appreciating the smaller things in skating. It's kind of reminding of us when we first started skating because there's a new, a lot of new quad skaters out there and they're very supportive of our community. And not only that, but when I go to the skate park and you know, there's usually quad skaters and I feel motivated because they're excited about tricks that they're learning and I'm like, damn, I want to do something new as well, you know? I want to get that feeling back, yeah, yeah. So it kind of motivates me, inspires me to try something new. 10 years is a long time to do, to be doing anything, oh, sure. especially in rollerblading. Yeah, <laughs> so John, yeah. John Julio's a man, man. He's put on the IMYTAs, the Blade Cup for 10 years, opened a shop. He's been in the industry from day one. Everyone of us looked up to him. So he's the man for putting this on and uh, keep rolling, you know, and I support everything they do and uh, want to keep coming back to this and hopefully it goes another 10 years. There's obviously a heavy, heavy roller skating vibe going on. I personally a fucking huge fan of it. I love it. What do you what do you think of that? Like how do you think it's helping rollerblading? I think it's yo, honestly, I give them I think it's kind of why blading popped off again. I'm not gonna lie, man. I think roller skating took it over. Everyone was fresh and inclusive and that's all and I think since roller skating was judged so much and they're able to succumb from that, they never judge anybody else and it just received with open arms and I think I think there's some rumors that people have been saying Arlo may or may not be a vampire. What do you think? That's a hundred percent true. I that's yeah, hundred like that doesn't yeah that that makes sense. That works actually. I'm with yeah. Just in regards to like the rollerblade fashion realm, that small even niche community, Arlo Eisenberg's still a god. Oh man, all I'm gonna say if it's Twilight, yo, he's definitely sparkling when I see him, man. <laughs> That was absolutely amazing, Chris. You did a fantastic job with that edit, with the interviews. I really enjoyed it. If anybody else wants to become a correspondent for the Now Blading in the future, let me know. If you have any events, competitions you want to go and cover, send me an email. I have a link in the description below with my email address. And if you enjoyed this episode, make sure and hit the like button. And subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. 
hit the bell icon to be notified of all new uploads. Make sure to follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I have links in the description below, as well as links to my Patreon page and donation page. And if you become a Patreon member, you'll have exclusive content to videos and perks not available on this channel. And it's gonna help me to create more content for you to see. Thanks a lot for watching the first episode of On the Streets at the Den and Outblading YouTube channel.